Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Guess what, folks? Part four, we're still building the calculator. Gonna make some more cool buttons and do some more cool stuff and uh, have some fun. If you haven't watched parts one through three, go watch those now. You'll find links down below. Go watch them, come on back, and we're gonna do some more stuff. All right, so our calculator is shaping up nicely. The last thing we did was we made this little X squared button down here. Oh, error, can't square null, can you? Okay, fine. Um, what about doing something similar to take the square root? All right, go the other direction. Well, for those of you that know your math, it's the same thing, but instead of raising it to a power of two, we're gonna raise it to a power of one half, which is 0.5. So it's the exact same thing. So let's go to design view. Let's take this guy, copy and paste it. Yeah, we'll go down another row here. Let's, um, you know what, we're gonna make, let's make this a little bit bigger. We're gonna make this, this guy's gonna get really big. My original one that I showed you before, right? We got a lot, lots of buttons coming up. So we're gonna, we're gonna make it a little bit taller here. So let's bring this stuff down below here, like that, okay. So this guy, what we're we gonna name him? Let's go over here. Let's call him button. SQRT square root. The caption is going to be the square root symbol, which is ASCII 251. So hold down the Alt key, 251. There's that. You can do that or put square root of X, whichever you want. That's fine. All right. And what's the code going to look like? Well, we can basically copy the code from the other one, All right? Event on click. All right. Literally just copy this, paste it in here. Okay. And instead of raising it to the power of two, we're gonna raise it to the power of 0.5. That's how you do a square root. Save it, all right, close it, close it, open it, give me 100, and square root it, boom, 10. That's all I gotta do, square root it again, boom, 3.1. Good enough, all right, that's how you do square roots, simple enough. You, know, you wanna find a number, like, you wanna find a cube root? You could do that yourself, watch this, do 1,000, all right? raise it to the power of, and then do one divided by three here, right? And then evaluate that, that gives you 10, see? Easy enough. Gotta know your math, folks. Remember that whole, you know, the algebra trig, I'll never use this stuff. Well, you know, if you wanna be a computer programmer, having all that math really does help. I've, I come into a lot of situations where es algebra especially is very helpful. I can't say that I've used calculus a lot, Trig I've used a bunch of times trying to figure out stuff, but uh, it's it's good to know. And um, one of the things that like people that say, I'm never gonna use this stuff, a lot of it is learning a way to think, a way to process new information and how to figure things out and problem solving. So yeah, you might never need to, you know, calculate derivatives or that, you know, all that stuff, but learning how to process stuff mathematically, it, it forms your brain as a child into problem solving. So it's very helpful, even if you don't think you're gonna ever use advanced math. It's teaching you how to think, not what to think, right? All right, next up, how about a little plus or minus button? All right, we'll stick that guy right there. So I can easily negate this guy instead of having to click over here and do that. Well, actually that puts it at the end of it. So that's not even, not, that's not even correct, so back it up. So I'd have to click there and then hit it on the keyboard. And the whole point is to avoid not having to use a keyboard, right? If we're using this on a tablet or a smartphone, okay? So I want a little plus minus button. So what does that have to do? Well, the plus minus button has to stick a minus sign out front on the left side of the calc text, unless there's a minus sign there already, in which case, remove it. So we need an if then, and we need those string functions that we covered before, okay? Let's make our button. Design view, all right, just copy one of these other buttons, doesn't matter which one. Slide it there. This is gonna be Alt-241, Alt-241, that's a little plus minus symbol like that. I like that guy, all right? And we don't need this, because we're not adding onto the calc. Let's call this guy uh, button negate, N-E-G, button negate. All right, and then event on click. All right, what's this gonna look like? Well, first, on error, resume, next. Again, if it's null, it, you know, there's issues where this might cause a problem, but they're not critical, so just on error, resume, next works fine. Those people that say don't use on error, resume, next, don't listen to them, it's fine. In simple situations like this, it's okay. 
So the first thing I have to do is check to see if the left one character is a minus sign already. So if left of calc minus one, if that one character is equal to a negative sign, then we got to remove the negative sign. Otherwise, we're going to add the negative sign, right? Add negative sign. And that's simple. I like to do the simple stuff first. Calc equals negative sign and calc and if. All right. Get the easy guy out of the way first. Now we got to remove that negative sign. All right. What's that going to look like? It's exactly the opposite of what we did before with our backspace button. Instead of looking at the left side of the string, though, we're going to look at the right side of the string. So we're going to say calc equals the right of calc. How many characters? The length of n minus 1. Remember that? So the length of calc minus 1. That's it. That's just going to remove that negative sign. All right. Save it. Give me a quick debug compile. Make sure we're all good. All right. Close it. Close it. Open it up. 96. Negative. Positive. Negative. Positive. Negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. No. <laughs> I'm an opera singer too, I guess, right? <laughs> All right, there we go. So we got negative, negative 96. Give me a square root. Oh, error. I guess we can't handle imaginary numbers, right? <laughs> that would be an advanced feature for, uh, that wouldn't be, uh, maybe I'll add that to the extended cut. We'll see. If you want to see it, let me know. It would literally just be looking to see if the value that you're trying to square is negative. And if so, calculate the square of its positive and add an I on the end of it. Yeah, meh, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> All right, moving on. These guys, the, the, the multiplication and division. Now, your, your person, your user might not be familiar with that being division. So let's put the friendly division symbol there. Okay. All right, let's go in here. Design view. Change this guy to, I think it's Alt 247. No, 246. Alt 246. There we go. All right, there's our friendly division symbol. Save it. Close it. Open it up again and let's try it out. Nine divided by three equals error. What's that? Well, eval doesn't know about that guy. It doesn't know that that symbol is. Division. So you got two options here. You can either manually throw it a division in here instead of adding the calc the caption, do an add to the calc the thingy, but then the user's going to see that up here too. And I don't want that. I want them to see the division symbol in here too. So what we're going to do is we're going to intercept it. Okay. In our button equal click, let's go back to our code. Where are you? Uh, do calc. Right here. Right, in our do calc in the button equal click, right? When it gets to this point here, before it evaluates it, we're going to replace that character, that division character, with an actual division sign. Then the user will never see that. It happens immediately before it gets evaluated. To do this, we're going to use the replace function, which, which looks inside a string and replaces any instance of a particular string inside of that string. So you can say... So you can say, take that calc string, replace every division symbol with a forward slash. All right, so right here, that's going to say calc equals replace calc, comma. What are we looking for? Alt 246. Yeah, I can never, it's all right. I always get 246, 247 mixed up. Comma, and what are we replacing it with? A forward slash. While we're in here, I'm going to save you a minute. While we're in here, we're also going to replace the star, the asterisk, with an X. So we're going to come back over here, and this guy, just put a little X in there. Everyone knows X is multiply, right? So if it sees an X, replace the X with a, an asterisk. Copy that, paste it, put an X in there, replace that with an asterisk. Okay. I'll zoom in so you can get a better look at the code, right? All right. Debug, compile, close it, close it, save it, open it, five divided by two equals, and it works, look at that, times three equals, beautiful, it's beautiful, it's beautiful, it's beautiful, you look marvelous.
If you're old like me, you know what that's from. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there we go. That's going to be part, what part was this, four? Yeah, part four. Uh, let's do our little end of lesson color change. What are we doing today? Let's go with, uh, let's go, let's go, let's go gray. Yeah, do that. We'll do a dark gray up here. Ooh, make this black. Yeah, that looks, that looks sexy. Let's see. All right, looking good. What's up next? Part five, we're going to do these memory buttons. Woohoo, little memory button. That's going to be cool. So uh, that's it. That's your part four. Hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you uh, next time, tomorrow. When's, what's today? Today, this is going to be Monday's video. So yeah, part five will be tomorrow, Tuesday. Okay, bye. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. 
there are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members, Get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.